This is Sports Savant TV, and I approve this message. <laughs> well, we are getting this report on a little bit later than I would have hoped, but at least it's given me time to get plenty of rest. Of course, the Oklahoma Sooners have had a lot of rest because they haven't played a football game. They haven't played a football game since the first Thursday of this month. you got to go back to November 3rd, that Thursday night game in which the Sooners at times struggled, but controlled the ball and definitely controlled the line of scrimmage as far as running. And Dimitri Flowers had a huge game on a night in which we didn't see Joe Mixon because of suspension and because of Samaj P. Ryan, who's had issues, of course, with leg muscle. Well, looks like both Pete Ryan and Mixon will be back this Saturday, and they'll need both as the Sooners will try to stay undefeated in Big 12 play. Oklahoma winners of six in a row and the only unbeaten team in conference play, but they'll have to handle Baylor and avoid overconfidence because, of course, the Baylor Bears, well, the last two games have not been pleasant for the guys from Waco and of course, this is a team that's had to deal with on-the-field issues, off-the-field issues. We'll talk more about OU Baylor in just a second. Of course, the Sooners, uh, because they did play on Thursday night, by the time they played Baylor, would have had nine days of valuable rest. And I'm telling you what, the timing for this could have been better because it looks like, you know, Matt Romar, from what I've heard from Bob Stoops um, in the press conference that they um, conduct on Mondays, um, you know, slated to practice, you know, valuable defensive linemen. And the Sooners can't have too many defensive linemen. So it looks like Romar possibly could play Saturday. Speaking of possibly could play, uh, Capri Doucette at linebacker. Uh, you got to have him to rush the quarterback uh, from the outside. So it looks like um, you'll have his services. Of course, still um, not good news at all for uh, Matt Diamond. Doesn't look like he'll be ready to go. And I wouldn't be surprised if Charles Walker never played again. The concussions, uh, that's been too big of an issue for him. And it's really a shame because he's such a talented player. Um, in terms of Parrish Cobb at corner, Right now, it's looking like Oklahoma State. Remember the major injury that he suffered against Texas early October? Hoping maybe West Virginia he'd be back, but that's doubtful most likely because, remember, there's a bye week in between West Virginia and Oklahoma State. The Cowboy game will be on December 3rd. All eyes right now look like it's going to be December 3rd for uh, Parrish Cobb at that corner position, which he's been getting killed at all year long. Um, but we already mentioned it earlier, so my JP Ryan, He's been out for quite a while, but it looks like he is going to be ready to go. Who, who knows if he'll start? But good news is, again, you didn't have Mixon or P. Ryan against Iowa State, and it looks like you'll have both. And, of course, along with the services of uh, Dimitri Flasher, again, uh, I really thought saved Oklahoma's bacon uh, last Thursday because they were able to hold the ball for such an extensive period of time and keep the ball out of Iowa State's hands for a long period of time. So for the Sooners, you know, it's kind of ironic that I've got that guy right there over my right shoulder, president-elect. Because one thing that we've learned about politics is the same thing when it comes to sports. And that is, you know what, any underdog can have their day. And if you've seen the latest lines for Oklahoma Baylor, you know, was it 16? I checked today, 17 and a half. Oklahoma is a three-score favorite to beat Baylor in spite of the fact that Baylor can still score points, in spite of the fact that Oklahoma's secondary can't stop anybody, and Oklahoma's giving 17 and a half points, a little bit alarming. But, of course, I'll have my pick at the end of the show. Uh, Baylor, we know one thing about the Bears. For the last three or four years, they have been amazing when it comes to running the ball. They've also been pretty good, too, by the way, when it comes to the air attack. And this will be the third different Baylor quarterback in as many seasons that the Sooners will face. You might remember two years ago when Bryce Petty barbecued Oklahoma. Of course, it doesn't help when Oklahoma's playing way off the receivers and allowing Bryce Petty to complete like 58 passes in a row or 13 or 14. But regardless, it was like playing catch. And as a Sooners secondary that day got waxed. And you might remember last year, Stenham, the uh, backup QB, because uh, Seth Russell had a late season injury, the neck, and it was too much for him. And Basically, he had to retire for the season, uh, so he had to go get Stenham, who didn't do a bad job. Of course, Stenham now um, is no longer at Baylor. He transferred prior to the 2016 season. But now the Sooners will face Seth Russell, strong arm quarterback, and Sooners better keep an eye on KD Cannon. He's one heck of a threat. You know, it might not be the Baylor offensive old because, you know, the Baylor offensive old had All-Americans up front. We know, of course, about, you know, Corey Coleman, and the, the All-American he was. 
Um, and, of course, we know that Shock Limwood is one of the best running backs in the country. Of course, he's still on the team. But if you didn't hear the news, you know, Shock Limwood last week only got half a dozen carries. Reportedly uh, gotten to some sort of, um, I want to say, altercation because this was really one-sided. Ends up pushing a Baylor graduate assistant while on the sideline. Didn't get to go back into the game after that. In fact, the attitude of uh, Linwood is such a problem right now that uh, Coach Grobe has suspended Chuck Linwood for this particular game. But don't think that Baylor won't run the ball, and don't think that they don't have the capability to run. The good news is that the Sooners have been good all year when it comes to containing the run. They've been pretty good in, in this category, okay? Um, all things considering, the Sooners did not do too terrible of a job, you know, in the Texas game. Uh, speaking of facing terrific running backs, you know, they didn't do too terrible of a job when it came to, um, you know, defending Foreman. You know, Foreman did have a nice game, but remember, you know, Texas was giving him the ball constantly, okay? So it's not the rush defense that concerns me. It's the pass defense. So I do think Baylor, in spite of the fact that they looked and played and acted like shit against TCU and giving up over 60 points and getting embarrassed at home and really taking themselves realistically out of any chance to win a Big 12 championship, I do think Baylor, because of their talent, because I think they'll have pride, will play tough against Oklahoma, and I do think they'll score some points. But again, Baylor looked like shit on defense, okay? When you give up over 60 at home, uh, problems, problems, problems. And um, I do think that the Sooners will have one heck of a day throwing it with Mayfield, you know, catching it with Westbrook, catching it with Andrews, you know, catching it um, with anybody or everybody that wears a Sooner uniform going out for a pass. Because I do think that this Baylor defense is bad. And I think it's going to be a magnificent running day. Because remember, this Baylor defense um, – that used to have a fine reputation for rush defense, they lost everybody on that line. I mean, it's a practically brand new line that Baylor, you know, had to go with to start the season. And you can tell that it's not the same. You can tell that they're mortal when it comes to rush defense. So I do think this will be a high scoring game, but I don't think it's going to be a 40 to 50 point difference like you saw last week. I think Baylor comes back and plays better. And by the way, don't be surprised too. If this is the last competitive game between these two teams, Baylor's future right now looks pretty bad. Okay, they're present. Well, they, they've seen you know worse days. They've seen better days. Right now, they think they have like a what, like a six and two record um, right right now. I mean, they're bowl eligible. Um, biggest problem Baylor has right now is the fact that um, amongst other things, is really not knowing what direction they're going in. Um, Grobe. He's not going to be a coach there for long. I, I guess he's just a fill-in until they can find the permanent guy. And the biggest problem you have with that, and I had one subscriber, by the way, um, just recently give me this message. Baylor only has two people, only has two players in their 2017 recruiting class. Only two. And unless they could just collect about 20 or 23 um, players, that fast and players, by the way, they can make an impact, you're going to see Baylor football start to drop like a bad habit. It's not going to be good football at all. Could they go back down to the Iowa State, Kansas level of today? It's a possibility because you got to have players, okay? I, mean, I don't care if you get Bill Belichick to coach your team, okay? I don't care if you get Nick Saban to coach your team. You don't got the players, you don't got a prayer. Even in a league by major college football standards, as bad as the Big 12, especially when it comes to trying to stop anybody. So I do think that Baylor's future doesn't look good at all. Who knows if they're going to get penalties from the NCAA. Of course, we know about sexual assault charges against their players. Of course, we know um, other things have happened to, of course, the fallout, you know, with, with Coach Art Browse, you know, his termination in what just could be only described as um, one word, uh, one word, and that is fiasco, a fiasco. So... You know, this, again, might be the last time that you see Oklahoma and Baylor where the Sooners won't be able to name their score. I still think the Sooners will win, but you know, in the upcoming seasons, uh, it's, it's going to be like look, watching the Baylor that we saw in the late 90s and 2000s. And, of course, they were pretty much the doormat of the Big 12, and I think it's going to go back to being that, but not this year. Final thoughts on this game? Well, pretty much 
in a nutshell, look for a lot of points. Look for Baylor to be successful throwing the ball because, again, I don't trust Oklahoma secondary, but I do expect a few stops by Oklahoma. In the meantime, I don't think Baylor's defense has a prayer at all against the Crimson and Cream. And as long as Oklahoma avoids overconfidence, in other words, as long as they avoid what happened on Tuesday night with Hillary Clinton, when that guy over my shoulder there won the presidency, proof that anything can happen, I think the Sooners should be fine. I'm going to say 48 to 31. 48 31, right at the cusp of that point spread. Okay, 17 and a half. So I think just barely Baylor will cover. Uh, by the way, still no word yet on when the kickoff time for OU West Virginia is going to be, which, of course, is the next game for the Sooners. And a game that could very well go a long way toward deciding the Big 12 champion, as will Bedlam on um, the first Saturday of December, the regular season finale. Keep in mind that OU OSU will be either 11 a.m. or 2.30, but it will not be a night game, okay? It won't, it won't kick off during the evening time. That's one thing we can't tell you about Bedlam, which is still down the road. I look for the Sooners to make it seven wins in a row and remain on top in the Big 12, but it will happen in basically a track meet fashion. Don't forget about my Let's Talk College Football show. It will be on this very same webpage soon. Boomer Sooner.